Hello, race fans. How are you? Welcome again. Rob Howden here, the Road to Indy Insider, and another one of our essentially preseason editions. As I'm going to work my way through as many drivers as I can who will see this year on the Road to Indy, whether it's USF 2000, Indy Pro, or eventually we'll jump into the Indy Lights field that continues to firm up. 12 confirmed drivers now for the 2021 season. Uh, again, 18 minutes late from our start. We were supposed to start at 2 o'clock. I hooked up with Hunter Yaney, who's going to be my guest today. We had things going. I thought they were having audio trouble. It was me. It was my fault. <laughs> I did Of all the stuff I've done here for eCardi News, Road to the Insider Book It podcast has never been on my side. It was this time. Rebooted, and we're good to go. Uh, Hunter's waiting in the studio. We'll bring him out here momentarily. But let me give you the bit of the buildup here now, because here's a young driver I think is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, came through karting. We'll talk a lot about his origin story. Made the move right with Velocity Racing Development straight from karting into the F4 car. That's what he learned on. Uh, did a bunch of testing. Big season last year in the uh, F4 US Championship, winning the title there with eight victories. Uh, and, of course, then moving now, going to be with us here on the road to Indy as well, into the Indy Pro 2000 category. So skipping USF 2000, having had that success in F4, going to go right to Indy Pro 2000. It'll be an interesting story to watch throughout the 2021 season, just 15 years of age. He's waiting on the side. Let's bring him in here right now. Boom. Hunter, how are you, man? Thank you for your patience. You and your dad were scrambling, thinking it was your fault. It yeah. was my fault, right? Yeah, it was. <laughs> That's an age-old go-kart thing, isn't it? Where the driver always says it's the mechanic's fault. The mechanic always says that the chassis guy has the chassis overstuck. And the engine, yeah, then the, ch the chassis guy's always blaming the driver, right? Yeah, it's always just. <laughs> it's always somebody else. Maybe, yeah. Well, it was my fault this time. Hey, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm excited about, uh, about well, for number one, having Velocity Racing Development in the series this year. Of course, you'll have a teammate, Eric Evans, under the tent as well. Eric's going to run USF 2000. You're an Indy Pro 2000. Um, first and foremost, like we always like to do here, we're really introducing you to the race fans of the Road to Indy and IndyCar. Uh, first off, 15 years of age, tell us where you live, uh, where you go to school, and then we'll talk about your origin story and really, really how you started racing. So... I live in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Um, it's on the far, yeah, the far east side of Virginia. Okay. To the ocean front. Um, I go to an online private school called On Track. All right. So, I like that. Yeah, they're really like they're really easy and it's really breathable. Just like so that way, when you have to go somewhere, they're just like, oh yeah, you can take off. Just make sure you get caught up when you get back. So, so really adaptable, really adaptable for what you're trying to do. Yeah. All right. Uh, origin story is the first thing. Obviously, we want to let people know where you came from. Judging by that flag uh, behind you on the wall, I got a feeling that maybe you guys are Formula One lovers at, at your place. How did you fall in love with racing? Was, were your parents racers? Were they fans? How did how did this all come about? So none of my parents, grandparents, or anything like that, none of them were racers at all. Okay. I was, I was the first one. So all right. As long as I can remember, I've been watching – Cars, like Cars, the Disney movie. Love it. Every night on Saturday. Every night? Yeah. And I did that until I was like, I don't know, maybe 11 years old. <laughs> and I play with matchboxes and pullback cars all the time. Yep. Um, so, yeah, cars have always, just cars in general have always been like a love for me. Okay. I dig it. Uh, let's talk about then... So you, you, you're in love with cars. You love the movie. I'm, I love that movie. It's one of my favorite movies, actually. Yeah. What's the transition, though, for you going in, in, the, in the kart racing? When, when did you first start? Where was it? And tell us how you kind of got yourself into karting. So at first, I just started going to this kart place down the street called American Indoor Karting. All right. It was just like a little indoor track, 17-second laps. And I asked the guy... Well, I started out in the little carts, and I asked the guy, I was like, how can I get into one of the big carts? And he's like, you have to run, like, a something, something lap, like a lap time. He was like, he's never going to beat that. <laughs> okay. And I went out, and I beat the lap time, and I got to drive the big cart. And then I wanted to get in the even faster cart, which was, like, the ones they, like, had all tuned up. Because, you know, like, how, like, when you go to those karting places, they have, like, the three carts that are all tuned up. Of course, yep. Yeah, so then I was like, how do I get in those? And he said, all right, you have to do this lap time. <laughs> So then I got, then I did that lap time the next time I came and I got in one of those carts. And then from then, then from then on, um, 
my dad flew me down to Charlotte, North Carolina, and he was like, we're going to do something fun today. I'm like, okay. So he went down there, and I got to drive, like, a real pro cart around for the first time. I got to drive a Swift. Nice. And while well, my dad talked to the guy who owns the track, Eric Jones. Eric Jones, yeah. Pro Motorflex. So I got to drive that around. Then we took off for a couple months, and I was like, hmm, I wonder if I'm going to get back one of those go-karts. <laughs> I forget when I got it. I forgot when I got the go-kart. But then I got my first, like, owned go-kart. That one? No, it wasn't that one. Okay. It was, it was a, an arrow. Yep. Yeah, it was an arrow. And we drove that for, I think, a year. And then we went to – I forget if we went to Bennick after or if we went straight to Tony Kart. Okay. But, I, I really like the Tony car, Tony Kart out of all three of them. I, I think I was most competitive with that one. Nice. Uh, so did you start running regularly at, at GoPro? Because obviously in Virginia Beach really wasn't where you – there's not a lot of racing there for you. Did, did you get into any kind of regular competition, any, any club racing or, or series racing? Yeah. So every month we'd go down to GoPro and we'd do their club races and yep. stuff. And it, was, it just took me a while to like warm up to it because – as you probably know, I was pretty bad at karting. <laughs> well, listen, everybody, everybody has a learning curve, right? When they get more comfortable, more comfortable. You obviously got decent at it, but yeah, I, I would never say you were bad at it because uh, you know the announces the races I announced, so supernats and stuff that we'll look at later were, were more down the line with your career. But so you're saying you struggled a little bit at the start? Yeah, I definitely did strug struggle. Um, and we did a couple years of just doing GoPro club racing. Yep. And then we started doing like WKA and USPKS and then eventually started doing SCUZA. Those were some, some of my biggest races that I've had. Okay. And I think Supernats was definitely like one of the most fun races I've ever done. I think I only did it maybe once or twice. I think I only did it twice. Yeah. There's, there's something about this race. Those of you who are, who are watching here and, and you know, are, are IndyCar fans, Road to Indy fans, uh, the Supercarts USA Supernational is essentially the biggest, the single biggest karting event in North America. 500 and something drivers on the parking lot of the Rio Hotel every year. I think this year will be the 24th edition of it. Here's a shot of you drifting it through the corner here. They got curbs built up and everything. They race under the lights at night. That's on the Cart Republic, with I believe I, you're probably running with Cart Sport North America there. T talk about. That was obviously a big race for you. You know, I, I, any young driver, you're working your way up the ranks, right? And you, you get a chance to go to the Supernats for the first time, and it really is the will be the biggest race of your young career when you're coming up through the ranks, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, that was probably one of my best races or my best race weekends because okay. I qualifying went pretty terrible. I qualified 25th, and then I moved. I think I moved up 13 spots. Wow. Oh. Um, yeah. 13, Thanks, something like that. I can't remember really clearly, but I think I did the same thing in the next race because I started, I think, in the same place, I think. It was so long ago. It was, right? Yeah. It feels so, like yesterday, but it was a while ago. So you're coming through karting. Now, again, one of the things you said, your, your parents didn't race themselves. Uh, they weren't particularly race fans from what, what you're telling me. So was it just a, you started to get this love for the sport? Your parents were like, man, this guy's loving it. He's getting good at it, so we're going to support him. Is that Was that kind of the way things set up? Yeah, my dad is like, a really big believer like if you like i said from when i was eight i wanted to be a formula one driver and okay. i was like and he was like okay so then i started doing all these things and he i guess he recognized my love for racing because now we're hitting it big yeah you're pretty deep into it now <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, so listen, one of the things we always want to talk about, you know, you talk about you getting into the sport, into karting, and so many young drivers, of course, come through the karting ranks. Then they'll take that step from karting to cars, right? And so tell me about when was it when you guys sat down and went, uh, you know, it's time to make the move. And I, I know you and I talking before, it was kind of working with Dan Mitchell at Velocity Racing Development. Talk about how you met Dan, got together with him, and then eventually made that jump from carts, getting into one of their F4 cars. So I believe I met Dan at Supernats, my first year at Supernats, when I was still in a Swift cart at um, in 2017 okay. or 2018, one of the two. And he said, hi, I'm Dan. What's your name? I said, I'm Hunter. And um, I wasn't a Bennett cart driver at that time. I was under cart sport. But I'd go over there every once in a while and say hi and like go and check it out because I think that was right before we started moving to Bennett. Okay. And 
they had an F4 car and a USF out front. Yeah. And like, oh, those are pretty cool. <laughs> I <laughs> like those. Yeah. And Dan said, do you want to, do you want to sit in it? And I was like, yeah, sure. So I got inside it and I was like, wow, this is big. And he was like, you think you can drive one of these? Cause I think at that point him and my dad already knew that I was going to start practicing. Okay. And I was like, I was like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm not sure. And then we turned it on and he was like, all right, so you pull this little lever and then you hit this button and you start it up. And I was like, okay. And we started it up and it was one of the, like, it was, it was just so cool. I was like, whoa. It was, like, it was a wild. game changer. It was a game changer, right? Yeah. That's amazing. So you get that experience. What about your first time at, where did you drive the car for the first time? And how did it feel going from carts to cars? How much different was it for you? Did you, did you feel like maybe it was something that you were very comfortable at, but what was, let's, just, let's start. Where was it? What was the first time you, you turned a lap in a car? So I went to Roebling road for my first, for my first drive in a car. And I was super excited the day before I like couldn't sleep that night. And then it took me about 20 times to get the clutch before <laughs> I actually pulled out of the pit lane. And I remember some videos just looking back on the videos, my head just like, Boom. yeah. Well, this, see, listen, this is the funny thing about this, right? Because we all expect you guys to be in carding, get in the cars, just get in there, pull out a pit lane. But like any of us, uh, and you'll get this yourself, and you'll be easier now when you finally get, you know, you turn 16 to get your license. Well, you got to get that pull, getting that clutch throt, throttle thing. Everybody yeah. struggled with it when they were first, when they drove their first standard car for, car for the first time. And we put you guys in a race car to do it. And it's yeah. just everybody watching you, right? So there's the pressure to be able to get off the line in the garage in the in the pit lane. It's not the easiest thing to do, but once you obviously once you learn it, it's a little easier, right? Yeah, and I was like scared at first too of like how loud it was and like all the sounds. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not sure if it's supposed to make that sound. Or, like, yeah, oh. all right. And I'm like, I don't know, maybe I'm doing it wrong. So I kept <laughs> messing it up, and Dan's just like gas, and then he's just like, just rev that thing. That's it. Yeah, he's like, just more gas, and then I'm like, okay. And he's like, more clutch. And I'm like, oh, gosh. <laughs> it was like one of the hardest things for me to learn. And then when I finally made it out there, I turned my first lap, just feeling the car. I was like, whoa, I'm in a race car. And then the next lap, since I practiced on the sim a lot, I'm like, well, okay, I practiced on the sim, so I can probably just do this now. So I just floored it down the straight into the first corner. And I was like, as I was going down the straight, I was thinking, well, this thing's got down for us, like an F1 car, so I can make this turn. Yeah. So like. Barely used any brake into the first chicane of Roebling. Just sent it into the corner and spun out like twice. <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, well, guess not. And I got my fear over pretty quickly of spinning and stuff. And I was like, well, that wasn't all that bad. That's funny. I guess that was also it was also your first opportunity to connect the your experience in the in the virtual world, the sim world, and in the real world, right? Oh, uh, maybe it's not exactly the same feel to get that kind of grip. Now you mentioned sim racing. Is that something you did a lot of before you got into the cars and, and just continue to do a lot of, of simulator training? Yeah, I practice all the time on the sim. Like okay. if it's somewhere I need to go next, it's like, where am I going next? I'll look at my schedule and I'll be like, okay, I'm going to Sebring. And I'll be like, all right. So I'll get on Sebring and I'll practice that for a while. And then I'll probably do, after I do that for a bit, I'll take a break. Then I'll come back and do a race just to work on my race craft. Yep. Because I think that's like, in karting, I didn't have the best race craft, but I had speed. So I knew that's what, one of the things I needed to work on. So I just got on the sim, did some races, and I was like, all right, I'm going to improve my race craft. And I think that's that's been a big help for me in this past year, and it will be a big help in this upcoming year. Yeah, I like that a lot. So here... <laughs> You know, we, anytime I have one of these shows, I'm looking over the resume. Of course, you're, you're, you're a new young driver coming into our program in the road, Andy. Your resume is just, it's just, it's just, hey, I'm wel welcome to racing championship. So you, you yeah. come out of the gate, right? And your first full season, your first season running F4, you end up winning eight races. Was it, what do you think played to your success? If I were to ask you that, obviously you came out of the gate pretty strongly. You won early and often. What was it you think that, that, uh, kind of laid the groundwork for you to be able to have so much success so early um i think it's just like how my dad and dan taught me like like if it wasn't good enough like if i went out and i drove and it wasn't good enough like it's not good enough so then i'd like put a bunch of pressure on myself to go back out there and do it even better next time so because if i do do a good job then dan's like all right good job and same with my dad but if i don't do a good job they're like 
what the heck was that? <laughs> All no, right. So uh, there's some there's some tough love happening here than what you're saying. Yeah. All right. I like that. Uh, so the season goes on. You end up winning some races early and you get on that roll. Can you talk? Because I talk about this a lot. I'd like to get your feeling on it. I talk about how confidence really plays into a young driver's psyche when, when, it terms, when, it, when it comes in terms of winning races. You start winning races. You start believing in yourself more. Is that something you felt during that, that first season of F4? Yeah, I was like, well, if I don't do good here, then like I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, Am I just going to keep carding the rest of my life? Like, <laughs> okay. I have, like, I have to keep doing good. So I think the thing that gave me confidence, it's kind of funny, is the seat belts. And that's something that karting didn't have. And I'm like, well, if I crash at karting, I'm just going to fall out of the thing. And I'm <laughs> All right. And I'm like, oh, that doesn't sound good. And then when I got in a car, I was like, oh, shoot. I'm like super belted in. And I was belted in there. Like, I felt like nothing could really happen to me. Like, everything was just, like, perfect. So there was, there was a confidence in the level of safety you had in the car. You were able to just kind of be one with it and get at it. Yeah. All right. All right. So if you look back last year, because I want to ask you the same thing looking forward. You look back last year. Was there one win that you look at and you say, man, this was this was the turning point for me. This is when a switch really came on when you won that champion or won that race and went, you know what, I can win this championship and I can, I can do this for a living. So – at first, I think this all started with like the Academy Winter Series, which is going on now. Yep. Um, I think it started with that, and I think it was like the Exclusive Racing Series out west. Okay. So before I did those races, I was like, "Geez, I wonder if I'm going to be competitive, or like how I'm going to do, how am I going to race?" Asking myself all these questions. So yeah. then when I went into those, I've only been against like Jay Howard at one time, Jay Howard and Kiwi. And then I was against Primus and like Ganella or pole position. So I was mm -hmm. against, I was never against everybody like all at one time. Yeah, so yeah, I hear you. It still had me kind of questioning, even though I won those, those races and got second in the other ones. I was, st I was still like, well, how am I going to do against a whole field of F4 cars? Yeah. And then, so I went into the first race and I was like, okay, how, let's see how this plays out. And, I ended up doing a pretty good job. The first the first race at Mid Ohio was got rained out. We were under safety car for I think ninety percent of the race. I think I remember that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, you, so you, you obviously get comfortable. You end up winning this championship. Now you do it all over again, right? You said you, you, you ran against some guys here, some teams here. Finally, everybody comes together for the F four championship with that entire schedule. You end up winning the title. Well, now in the off season, now you're testing as well. You're still with VRD. Um, tell me about your testing. I've seen shots of you in the in the USF 2000 car, of course, the ND Pro. Are you testing exclusively just the ND Pro 2000 car, or do you shake that USF 2000 out every once in a while? So sometimes Dan will just throw me in like any car, and I'll just be like, "All right." <laughs> so yeah, adapt to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll go from like the FR car into the ND Pro car, or into the USF 2000 car, or ND Pro to in to FR. So like. Switching around from all these different cars, just trying to adapt is kind of hard. But I really enjoy running the indie side of cars. Like, they're super light. Yeah. It makes them really fun to go around the turn super fast. <laughs> and I remember uh, it felt kind of like a British F3. I drove one of those overseas, I think, a year or two ago. Yeah, Catalonia, right? Yeah. I Yeah, I ran at Barcelona and Estoril. And Paul Ricard, and those were all really fun tracks. With with Carlin, yep. And yeah, nice, I like that for experience as well. Um, here's a question for you. Let's let's start talking about 2021. You're doing your testing in the off season. You're jumping to Indy Pro 2000 for this year. Uh, Mid Ohio and Barber, you have experience on those tracks. What about tracks that are maybe more exclusively to the road to Indy, like uh, a Road America per, per se? Uh, what else are you going to do? You're going to do New Jersey as well. Um, We'll talk about those two tracks. Have you driven them before? And what about the street circuits, man? Because that's something you've never done before. Yeah. So for the street circuits, I just, um, I'll get on the simulator and I'll practice Long Beach and Detroit, like whatever's closest to it. Yeah. Whatever's closest to like St. Pete or just any of the street courses. Because iRacing, I don't think has St. Pete. And Road America, like that's just one of the ones I need to focus on more. Like I'll do whatever I need to do for like the next race is coming up and then I'll do maybe like 25 minutes of road America. Okay. Just to, cause I've never been there before. 
So just make sure that I'm ready so that way we can get rolling quicker. That's it. Let's have a shot. I, I, to bring the shot up here, you running uh, your, your car. I like that number. I've been known to run the number 37 on occasion. So I like to see that there for sure. Uh, so, so you can do some stuff. Like you said, Long Beach is now on the iRacing. So you can do some Long Beach racing. You've been to Sebring. That's a track that kind of the bumpiness yeah. of it obviously plays to plays the street circuits. What about the Oval? I think I, I'm looking forward to the Oval. Uh, we're going to uh, Worldwide Technology Raceway at Gateway in August. Are you excited about getting to the Oval? Yeah, I'm super excited about Oval. So I'm, Good. I'm like, geez, I think it'd be pretty cool to do an Oval. And what do you know? And I'm doing an Oval. <laughs> so that's just another one. Practicing on the sim. The sim will really help out with that. Just watching video from other drivers yeah. that have been there. Because you can really access anything you want to see now on the internet. It's very true. Yeah. Very true. Is there one, uh, is there one track, one race that you're looking forward to? Is there a bucket list on the, on the schedule for Indy pro 2000 that you can't wait to get to? Uh, gosh. Well, I'm really excited to go out West this year. Cause I know we were all just East coast last year. I don't think we're, I don't think we're doing out West this year. Remember we, oh. were, we those, those races got canceled, dude. You gotta wait till oh. we gotta wait till Indy lights for that. Yeah. That's too bad. We yeah. were going to be going. That's right. So yeah. sorry. I, I apologize for not doing that to you. Uh, what about, are you really looking forward to the street circuits? Hopefully we'll get to Toronto this year. I'm crossing our fingers, but St. Petersburg, is that a race that you're looking at saying, man, I really want to try that one. Yeah. I'm really excited to see how I, how I do on a street circuit. I've never really been on a track like that before, other than yep. Sebring, like with the walls so close. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, man, I, I wonder what it's like on one of those tracks. <laughs> what are your expectations? What's uh, I asked this to Eli Navarro uh, earlier uh, on, on Monday. What, what is going to be a good season for Hunter Yaney? What, what do you got to do? What kind of results do you have to have for you to say, you know what, I'm pretty happy with where I am this year? Well, uh, as a pretty good movie said, if you're not first, you're last. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd really like to win the ch both championships this year and in the right. bar. So that would, that would probably be my dream year. That's awesome. Let's bring. Up, it's not really. It's not a question, but it's a comment because Chris Pantani from Cooper Tires is listening, and he says, "Watch." He says, "This is awesome for a Thursday afternoon," and I have to agree with him, Hunter. Good to connect with you here on Thursday afternoon. So, okay. So, what's the plan? Let's wrap this up with this. What's the plan? Are you potentially two years in Indy Pro Two Thousand? Are you already saying to yourself, "I'm going to have a good year. I'm going Indy Lights next year." Yeah. I'm. Well, I'll try. Yeah. Yeah. I always try and like win like if i can go for the win i'll go for it so yeah the goal would be one year i tried to i tried to just do it for one year so that way i can get it and move on to the higher series indeed i get that i love this shot of you here all focused up bolted in and ready to go we're going to see that when we get to barber in april all right my friend uh great opportunity to get a chance to meet you here uh on my road dandy insider i appreciate it i know that a lot of fans of course come on watch these shows they want to find out and they want to meet the young drivers they're going to be you know cheering for in the ntt indycar series in a couple of years if they want to follow you tell me how, how do they follow you uh, facebook twitter instagram are you on all three i don't think i don't think you're on twitter you don't use twitter do you uh yeah i don't oh I might, but I just don't think I'm super active on it. Okay, so what? How, how do they follow you on Facebook? What's the Instagram handle? And is there a website for them to follow as well? Yeah, so Instagram is just at Hunter Yaney, no spaces and no caps. And Facebook is Hunter Yaney Racing, all lowercase, no spaces. Um, and I do have a website, but it's really outdated. I think it might still have a picture of me in a go-kart on it. Well, no, there's a picture of you in the car, but it just says that you're 12 years old. I went and looked at it oh, earlier. Yeah. So you might want to update that. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're definitely not 12 anymore. But I'll say this. You're 15 years old. Talk about a, about a like an upward learning curve for you. Right out of karting, in, of course, that championship in F4, Indy Pro 2000. I'm really excited for you, man. I can't wait for us to get to, to, uh, to Barber. Thank you. I'm really excited, too. I'm excited for the season to start. Right on, man. Congratulations. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to drop you to the back. You hang out. We'll chat after the broadcast here. But, man, thank you so much for joining me today on this edition. Okay, thank you. Let's drop Hunter into the back there, folks. Again, uh, one of the drivers that uh, I think we're all looking forward to seeing this year in Indy Pro 2000 because uh, – 
you thought about watching it last year in the F4 program. This guy was on a tear, and all of a sudden the spotlight's on him because he did such a tremendous job. Eight race wins en route to the championship. So he comes in with a pretty solid pedigree here for 2021. And again, just another storyline right on the road to Indy. Things are looking so good, as I had said from the start. Uh, 12 cars already confirmed for, for Indy Lakes with a couple more potentially coming. Do we get 13? Do we get 14? Do we even get 15 potentially uh, sometime this season? I know Indy Pro's looking great. Hunter, of course, is going to be a part of a big grid. Probably 16, 17 cars, I think, for Barber. And then uh, USF 2000, there's a lot of parts still coming in. I got to say at least guaranteed 24. We could have as many as 28 on the grid. So growth on all three levels of the road dandy for this year. So this is a huge season, especially after the hiatus last season uh, for Indy lights and everything that happened with COVID-19 and everything that the series was able to do to somehow, you know, piece together a full series. It was all jammed together in those three months. We'll spread it out. Of course, starting in April with Barber Motorsports park. And then of course, getting back to St. Petersburg there, we'll run all the way to the end of the season. Uh, when USF 2000 and Indy Pro wrap up at New Jersey Motorsports Park, and we cap things off out at Laguna Seca for Indy Lights. But this is a young driver you need to watch, folks, for sure. Hunter Yaney, make sure you come into the paddock and meet them uh, throughout the season. But just a tremendous, uh, tremendous interview for Hunter, our first one, and I expect probably the first of many as well. Thank you so much for joining us here, folks, on what is it? It's Thursday, February the 11th. Hope you have a great weekend coming up. Thanks again for tuning in, folks. Book it.